Give me a little more volume on that. Can you test the one, two, test the one, two. Okay, that's great. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hasn't he been so faithful? Yes. yes. He's loosed our shackles yes. and set us free. Yes. He's been so faithful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just receive the love that he has oh, for us? Yes. Take the time to receive the love he has for us because he's been so faithful. And he will always, everything that he said he would do, it's already done. Yes. Just receive what God has for you. Receive as you continue to move forward in victory for your life. Yes. Amen? Amen? Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this blessed and glorious day. Thank you, Father God, for once again allowing us to pull up your table, Father God, and eat. Father, you've set up the table in the midst of our enemies, Father God. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that we get to eat the fat as a lamb. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word should go forth like rivers of living water. And your word, Father God, will not return void, but it will accomplish everything that you've called it to, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everybody getting to understand your word from the youngest in the spirit to the oldest, Father. That everybody will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to them today. Father, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you. I bind anything that would try to come up against this service, Father God. I bind it and cast it down right now, whether it's spiritually, physically, or financially, or electronically, it doesn't matter. I cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. And we go forth and we're going to proclaim your love, your victories. Hallelujah. We love you. We glorify you, Father, in Jesus' holy name. I decrease as you increase. I receive the mind of Christ right now. Use my vocal cords in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 All right, well, I hope y'all been taking good notes. Yes, sir. Amen. If you haven't been taking notes, then you go out on YouTube or Facebook and catch up. Bring yourself up to where we are. So I'm going to take us back to Romans 8 and 35. And the, and, and the title of the message that we've been given, I think this is the third or fourth week, I'm not sure, I think it's maybe fourth week of this series. And it's called Nothing Can Separate Us From God's Love. Amen. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what you've done in your past, what you, doesn't matter what you've done yesterday, doesn't matter what you do tomorrow, doesn't matter... What, how your mindset is, I'm here to tell you, God loves you and nothing can separate you from the love of God. Yes, there have been some things that we've done in our lives that we're not proud of. But just because we're not proud of those things don't mean that God doesn't love us. Amen. We all make mistakes, don't we? Yes. Amen. We all make mistakes from the pulpit to the parking lot. Everybody trips up, skips up. Everybody falls here and there, but you just have to get back up. The Bible says a just man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. Amen. You being just is you getting up. Amen. And when you get up, get back up in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He, they could look, death could not hold him down. Say that. And if death couldn't hold him down, death cannot hold you down. Amen. Whatever has happened in your life that has caused you to be to the point where you feel inferior or, or you feel like you're not worthy or you feel like you're ashamed or guilty, get rid of it. Cast it down. Why? Because Jesus looked at you and he says, you know what? That's my son. That's my daughter. You know, they're important to me. In fact, they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And you know what he said? He said that he loves us. Amen. Amen. He loves us. Sorry, y'all. Give me a second. All right. Praise God. <laughs> so let's go to uh, Romans eight thirty five because that's a part of the scripture that we've been we've been coming from. Amen. We've been coming from Romans chapter eight, and now we on thirty five. Remember we talked about last night about holy. What's holy? Because a lot of people try to make holy about, we'll read the New Living Translation, 
A lot of people try to make holy about your actions mm -hmm. and not about what Jesus has done for you. No one is made holy because of their actions. You can act holy. That's what the Pharisees did. They act holy. And because they act holy, they were unholy. Mm -hmm. But those who received Jesus became holy. How did they become holy? He made them holy through his blood. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And you know what they had to do in order to get holy? Once they received them? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. They were made holy. I don't care what you do, you can't make yourself any holier or any less holier than what Jesus has made you. Amen. Amen. Can you receive that? Amen. Amen. I Amen. receive it. Look, some people gonna run around here and be like, well, you know, you don't know what I did last week, Pastor. I don't care what you did last week. God don't even care about what you did last week. You know why? Because he doesn't remember your sin. Amen. 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 He doesn't remember it. He, he look, he forgave you for your sin of yesterday, today, and when? Forevermore. Forevermore. Now he's showing you his love. Why don't you just receive it? Amen. I know it's hard to receive when you're full of guilt. It's hard to receive when you're full of shame. But you have to let those things go. Amen. Those things are not of God. In fact, the word says that my people shall not be shamed. That's right. Amen. Amen. So don't look at something that you may, you may think that, well, you know, pastor don't know about what I did. Listen, y'all don't know about what pastor did. <laughs> Amen. Y'all concerned about what you did. What about what pastor did? What about what anybody did in the, in the congregation? What about anybody, what they did in the pulpit? What about anyone? Mm -hmm. Everyone. Everyone is made righteous not because of their behavior. You're made righteous because of your believing in Jesus. Amen. 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 So Romans 8, 35, New Living Translation, and it says this. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us as if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death? Even the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No. Somebody say no. 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 Despite all these things, overwhelmingly, I'm sorry, overwhelming victory is ours, ours. through yeah. Christ Jesus Hallelujah. who loved us. Amen. Do you believe Hallelujah. that overwhelmingly that victory is yours? Yes. Yeah. If are you in Christ Jesus, then if you're in Christ Jesus, then victory is overwhelmingly yours. Amen. Yeah, look, listen, we, we didn't just slide by. You know how folks like to say, well, you know, uh, how you doing? I'm just surviving. We are God's children. We're not just surviving. Say we that. are thriving. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're not down there. We're not down there pecking around with the chickens. Mm -hmm. No, we're flying with the eagles. That's right. Amen. 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 Why? Because you are a child of the most high God. You are an ambassador. You might know what an ambassador is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are an ambassador of Christ yes. here in this earth. Amen. Amen. Don't be scratching around like them chickens, y'all. <laughs> so Paul, Paul was talking to the uh, the Roman or the church in Rome at this time when he was talking, and he was letting them know that some things about to come their way. You know, just because you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior does not mean that you're not going to go through That's anything. Right. That's right. Doesn't mean, you know, somebody, some of us been lied to. Oh, yeah, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you'll never have another problem in your life. You need to go find that person. <laughs> you need to go and, and ask them, why on earth did they lie to you? That boy. Huh? Everybody go through problems. Everybody has situations. Everybody has some type of circumstance. The Bible says if you be godly, you will. If you live godly, you will suffer persecutions. Mm -hmm. The question is, how will you endure through that persecution? Now. Now, Paul endured through some persecutions. Paul was stoned. Paul was, was beaten. Paul was in a hurricane. Paul was put in jail. 
Paul was hungry. Paul went through some things, but still, even though he went through some things, overwhelming victory belonged to him. Amen. 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 So in the same way, no matter what you may go through, what may be coming your way, understand, as long as we talked about this this morning, as long as you have the mind of Christ, overwhelming victory belongs to you. How do you get the mind of Christ? Well, you first got to know Christ. Amen. There is no way that you can know somebody if you don't have a relationship with them. You can only know of somebody. And it's a difference. We don't want to know of Jesus. We want to know Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. When you know of Jesus, then anybody can become more important, more important than Jesus. Example, President Biden. I used this before. President Biden. We all say we know President Biden. We don't know President Biden. Mm -hmm. We know of mm -hmm. President Biden. Mm -hmm. The only one that knows President Biden is Jill. Mm -hmm. Jill Biden, why? Because she spends time, intimate time with Joe Biden. And because of that, she knows Joe Biden because she has a relationship with Joe Biden. In the same way, we are supposed to know Christ that way. The word says, if I be in you, John 15 and 7, if I be in you and you be in me, Ask what you will, and I will give you the desires of your heart. That's love, y'all. Amen. Why? Because Amen. it's a relationship. And it takes two, it, it takes at least two to be in a relationship, right? Yes, sir. Everybody say, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. I'm in a relationship with Jesus. I'm in a relationship with Jesus. Really? Are you really in a relationship with Jesus? Because a relationship with Jesus is compared to a relationship with a husband and wife. This is in Ephesians uh, 5, 30, 21, all the way through 33. It's compared to a husband and wife, right? Mm -hmm. And a husband and wife love, we like to, husbands like to spend time with their wives, wives like to spend time with their husbands. It's not a 50-50 thing. It's I give 100 and she gives 100. I don't want 50% of her. Amen. That's right. I want all of her. That's right. Amen? 100, 100. Well, guess what God wants from us? He don't want 50% of you. Amen. He wants all of you. That's right. Amen. Amen. He wants Amen. all of you. And, 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 and just like he wants all of you, you should want all of him. That's right. Now, I know Amen. people want him because of our prayers. I know prayers. And, you know, people have really, think about your prayers. Is your prayers this? Lord, give me. Lord, I need. Lord, I want. Lord, can I have? Lord, will you do? Is that your prayers? Mm -hmm. Because... To me, if somebody kept saying that to me, could you do this? Won't you do? Please give me. Please. And I'm like, you know what? I'm doing all this stuff for them, and they're not doing nothing for me. This ain't a relationship. I'm out. I'm done doing things for you. You are on your own. No, he didn't. Yes. You're out. In the same way, we treat God that we... we all we do is bang, bang, bang. But do we have a relationship with God? When you got a relationship with somebody, it's a give, give. Mm -hmm. It's not just a take, take. Mm -hmm. So it's all we want to do is take, 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 take. You can't continue to take, 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 take because you have to learn how to be like Christ. What was Christ? Well, the Bible says in the beginning, God, no, the Bible says in John 3, 16, that God gave is what? Only. It's only begotten. Only. So now I put emphasis on God yes. gave. Come on, step so step. if you want to be Christ like, you need to give, give. not just take. Mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere it says God take, God took. And people say, well, you know, God take, giveth, and God taketh away. No, he don't. Mm -hmm. When God gives, what he does, the Bible says he gives without repentance. Mm -hmm. Job said that in a time when he was depressed. And Job said, God giveth and God taketh away. He said that when he was depressed. People running around here quoting Job thinking they quoting God. That's not God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Come on, teach. That's not God. That was Job in a depressed state. Amen. And we're telling people, oh, well, God giveth and God taketh away. No, he don't. Everything he give people in the Bible, they had it. It was theirs. It belonged to them. Only thing they needed to do was receive it. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. God gave Adam and Eve the entire world. Huh? 
One thing he didn't give him was that tree. And because that one thing he said, thou shalt not, is the one thing they wanted. Because that's how we are as humans. Yep. We, we just, we're never satisfied. We just want more and more and more. Again, that's our prayers. Lord, give me. Lord, I want. Lord, I need. You know, if that, you come to me like that, I'm going to be like, you know what? Mm -mm. Here he come. Begging Benny. Humming and bumming. I hate to see him coming. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do. You, you hide from people like that. You, you screen your phone. Oh, Lord, here. Look who calling. I look over at my wife. You know they're going to ask for some money, right? <laughs> You know what? I'm going to let that go to voicemail. I, I'll call him back later. I said, Lord, give me something to give him. <laughs> and it's not that you don't have to give, but there are some times that money is not going to clear their issue. Mm -hmm. What's going to clear their issue is a change of thinking. Amen. Quit thinking like the world and start thinking like Christ. Amen. 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 And you can't think like Christ if you're not taught the word of God. Many of us have been preached that, preached that. We've been preached that until we've been green in the face. But nobody wanted to teach us the word of God. That is the thing. We need to be taught, taught, taught. After you are taught, then you can preach. Amen. Amen. Did they call Jesus a preacher? What did they call Jesus? Teacher. Teacher, Raboni. Teacher. Why? Because a teacher is important. It is important that you are taught the word. This is why God used so many different parables to help people to understand the word. It's about breaking it down so everyone from the youngest to the oldest can understand his word. Mm -hmm. God wants you to understand his word because when you work his word, his word will work. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Amen? Amen? But you have to first work his word. You can't work his word if you don't know it. Hmm? I can't eat pizza if I didn't go buy none. <laughs> oh, that's a huh? You have to get into a place that's giving you the word, that's feeding you the word, where you can ask questions. Ask questions. Where does thing come from where we go through all the years of school and we ask questions, questions after questions to learn, and then we get in church, and then we get dignified. We're so dignified, no, I'm not going to ask any questions because I don't want nobody to think I'm stupid. You are spiritually stupid because you didn't ask questions. <laughs> Amen. Only bad question is the one that you don't ask. That's true. That's the only way you're going to learn is by asking. That's why I talked about the youth. They ask some questions. I'm like, man, when they go out to college, they don't know. They don't know some stuff. You ain't, you're not, nobody's going to be able to come with a religious background trying to teach them a bunch of religion mm -hmm. because they already have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. They're not religious. They love Jesus. Amen? Amen. There is a difference. How I many of you know that Jesus didn't come back to give us a religion? That's right. You already got two, three thousand religions here on this planet. Why would Jesus come back to give us another one? He never said that Christianity was a religion. He said he is the truth, the way, and the life. Christianity is life. Amen. Christianity means Christian means Christ's life. So if you follow him, you have life. Amen. 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 And all this happened for you because of the love that he has. You know, Paul was trying to let us know that no matter what happens, whatever comes our way, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Situations, circumstances, problems, sicknesses, disappointments, etc., etc. Nothing. He's always there. Mm -hmm. He's omnipresent. Even when you think he's not there, he's there. Mm -hmm. He's omnipotent. That means he knows everything. <clears throat> Everything. There isn't a question that you can ask that isn't answered in that Bible. That Bible answers every question to what came first, the chicken or the egg. And the thing about it is you got to know what scripture to find 
in order to get it. I won't hold y'all in suspense. The but in, in, in Genesis, it said the chicken came first, right? The animal came first, then after the animal, it produced after itself, right? So the chicken came first. See, the Bible answers, even those questions you think are stupid, the Bible answers them. But you can never get your questions answered if you don't ask. Amen. 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 My wife is the question queen. <laughs> oh my gosh, she has a lot of questions. But you know what? That's who she is. And, and, and the more questions she asks, the more she know about you. You know, she, she wanted to make sure that I, I, I was born because a lot of things happened in the military. You know, you've been to two wars and stuff like that. What you don't want to do is open up. The Lord know I needed her in my life to make me open up. She asked those hard questions. She asked those questions I didn't want to hear. And she kept doing it over and over and over until I opened up. And it's time Jesus is saying, look, I want to open up to you. But you get to ask me what you need. Ask me the questions. You know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate you from his love. You know what? If you decide it. If you decided this day that I'm, you know what, I don't want to believe in God no more. I'm just going to, I believe in Satan. I'm just hold it right there. I don't believe in Jesus. Don't you know that God will still love you? He will love you all the way to hell if that's what you want. He will. He will love you. I mean, but you going to hell is actually your choice and not God's. That hard. Mm -hmm. Hell was never set up for us. It was set up for Satan and his angels, his demons, his demonic force. But then people don't want to believe in Jesus, and because of that, the Bible says hell is doing what? Enlarge in her mouth. Why? Because there are souls that are going there. Listen, if you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you don't have to worry about that. Your judgment was where? At the cross. Amen. Amen? Amen. And you were judged innocent. Innocent. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You were judged innocent. So whatever decisions that you may have made in life that is taking you away, taking you here, taking you there, and taking you everywhere except close to God. Listen, God still loves you. And he's out there with his arms wide open. And he's waiting on you to come back to him. Come back, my daughter. Come back, my son. I love you more than you can ever imagine. Come learn the, the, the love I have for you. I like the way the Amplified says the one thing. Come learn the unforced rhythms of life. Yes. Amen? Amen? And that's the thing about religion. Religion is forced on people. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he don't force himself. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's your choice. Amen? Amen. So, you know, there are a lot of people, and we talked about it this morning in Sunday school. There are people who, when they don't, they only go to church when they have a lot of problems. When issues hit, they go to church. As long as life is good, they ain't thinking about God. As soon as things get bad, oh Jesus, you know what? I know, Lord, I need to get back in church. I know, Lord, I, I need to get back there. Listen, that's easy for you to leave God. When you have problems, and if you have problems, and that's keeping you out of church, you're going to keep on having problems. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep on having them. But God will always be there with you. With his arms open, waiting and say, hey, turn to me, daughter. Turn to me, son. I'm right here. You don't have to go through that battle by yourself. I am right here. The victory. No, overwhelming victory is yours. Amen? Amen. And then some people, they're doing fine. They're going to church. They're worshiping the Lord. They're loving the Lord. And then as soon as they go through an issue, the first thing they do is stop going to church. Well, you know, things are just looking rough right now. And I, I need to get myself together. That's what got you where you are already. Because you are trying to get yourself 
together. You can't get yourself together. Amen. Only Jesus can get you Amen. together. Amen. 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 But we want to forget. We be like, well, we don't need Jesus. We can put ourselves back together. Listen, G listen, you didn't create yourself. Amen. If you didn't create yourself, how are you going to put yourself back together? Mm. It's not going to happen. No. But God will still love you. Amen. But you're about to have a hard life. But God will still love you. Huh? You don't have to have a hard life. Listen, God is right there. And he wants you to have a peaceful, restful, thriving life yes. in him. Yes. Where you don't have to worry about anything. He tells us don't worry. Amen? Why? Because he cares about us. You know, the scripture says, cast your care. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast your care on him because he cares for you. He loves you. This care that we're talking about is love. He loves you. And so he wants your problems. He wants everything that you that you can't handle. Guess what? He can. That's right. But he's waiting on you to give it to him. The Bible says we as righteous now, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. That means you, you don't have to go through no priest to talk to God. You ain't got to go sing 35 Hail Marys before you talk to God. No. All you have to do is simply come to yourself, come to your senses, and simply start talking to God. And do not be trying to talk Elizabethan. Don't be talking thus thy nevertheless. You don't speak King James. Talk to God just like you talk to everybody else. If you talk to God like you talk to everybody else, you will hear God just like you hear everybody else. Amen. 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 Pride. Pride will drive many of us away from God. You know, when we go through troubles and we decide to leave the church and we leave, we leave God. Really, you leave God before you leave the church. Mm -hmm. True. And you think I can do it on my own or I can make this work. That's pride. Me and my wife was talking. She said, that sounds like selfishness. I said, selfishness is pride. Because mm -hmm. you think you can do it without God. We were never created to be independent of God. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be in his love the entire time that we are living on this earth. When we leave this earth and go to be with him in heaven, we are, listen, we are created to be in his love. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are. We're created to be in his love. He loves us. He takes care of us. He watches over us. He heals us. He strengthens us. He blesses us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. You know, Hebrews 13 and 5 says that he would never leave nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. Never. You understand what never is, right? Mm -hmm. Never. Never. I like that when the Amphi said. Amphi said he would never, ever, ever. Never. Never, never, ever, ever, ever. ever. Leave or forsake or relax his hold on you. Never, ever, ever. It means he's always there because he loves you, loves you, loves you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Do you believe that God's love is unconditional? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Ah. Again, I said this last week, and a lot of us say we believe that God's mm -hmm. we believe that God's love is unconditional. And a lot of people will tell you that they believe that God's love is unconditional, but then they turn around and put a condition on you. If God's love is unconditional, aren't we supposed to be like God? Amen. I mean, I know you're not God. Big G. Right? Big G. But isn't that who we're supposed to be like? Mm -hmm. So if God's love is unconditional, why do we put so many conditions on things? Why do leaders put so many conditions on church members? Well, you know, if you know, if you want to uh, hear more from God, what you need to do is fast three times a day. <laughs> Give everything that you own to the church. Pray for thirty-five hours in one night, <laughs> and then God <laughs> will hear you. And he will answer your prayer. Why do we make God so mysterious and mystical? 
know, like from the beginning, if you read the word of God, all the way to maps in the back of the Bible, you will see that God always wanted to be amongst his people. Why? Because in a family, you love one another and you want to be amongst the family. Amen. Amen. God has always wanted us to be together. He wanted to be with us. He wanted a family. He created us. And now we're here. Remember how he was walking in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve? In the same way, he has always wanted us to be there. He always wants to be there with us. We are a family, mm -hmm. and he wants to show you his great love. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. So I'm going to talk about some things that I see dealing with religion, okay? Y'all all right with that? Mm -hmm. I know some people will. I know it's hard to, to pull that religion out of us, but we need to get rid of it. You know, I'm set my religion aside for a moment, then leave it there. Don't ever pick it up again, because that ain't what Jesus is. Jesus is not religion. Amen. Amen? So the thing about religion is they'll always take a scripture out of context and attempt to make you believe that God's love is predicated on your actions. God's love is predicated on your condition. The only way that God is going to love you or bless you is if you do this or if you do that. That was the law. We're not under the law anymore. In fact, in here, none of you was ever under the law unless you put yourself under the law. The law wasn't given to us. We were called Gentiles, and the law was given to the Jews. The, the, what came was grace, and grace was given to all of us, Gentile or Jew. It don't make a difference mm -hmm. if you can receive it, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people can't receive it because they continue to try and follow the laws. They can continue to try and do things to make God do something for them. That's not how God operates today. Amen. You want God to do something for him, for you? Get into a relationship with him. Love him. Amen. Can't you just love him? He loves you. Yeah. What was the price of him loving you? He gave his life so that you could feel his love. But a lot of us won't receive it. Let's go to uh, Romans. Let me give you an example here when I was talking about how uh, religion will always take a scripture out of context and attempt to make you believe that God's love is predicated or it depends on something that you do. Okay, all right. So let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. I'm reading New Living Translation. Is that all right? 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, New Living Translation. All right, now I'm teaching here. Amen. Get it? I'm teaching here. I'm not just preaching after I'm teaching. Because I want you to see this for yourself. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I've been stuck in all kinds of different religions. And I was always told certain things. And I didn't realize what they were doing was simply just pulling the scripture out and saying that it meant this, and the truth of the matter is, it never meant that. It was taken completely out of context, and so I didn't get understanding, they didn't have understanding, and so I took it as some type of condemnation, like a lot of us do. All right, are you there? Yeah. All right, don't don't y'all don't y'all start squirming in y'all seats once I start reading through this. All right, it says this. Don't you know? That those who do wrong will have no share in the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, who are idol worshippers, adulterers, male prostitutes, homosexuals, thieves, greedy people, drunkards, abusers, and swindlers, none of these will have a share in the kingdom of God. 
And then they stop right there. How do you feel after hearing all that? Mm. You know what? You know how I feel after hearing that? Hopeless. Mm. I feel like, oh shoot. I know I fit in here somewhere. I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to have any any share in the kingdom of God. But see, that's how religion does it. I need you guys to understand that anything with Jesus never ends on a negative. Amen. Never ends on a negative. Religion will stop you right there and then make you feel condemned, make you feel uh, like you're not good enough, make you feel, how we say, unworthy. Mm -hmm. You can't stop there. You have to keep reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to keep reading. If you stop there, you will think that you're never good enough. You're like, why are you tip doing this? I, I should forget it. I'm not trying to be Christ-like because I can't do it. Well, you know what? Nobody was able to do it. That's why we got Jesus. Amen. 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 If you don't go to the next verse, it'll cause you to take this entire passage out of context. And then that'll make you think that there is no hope for you, right? And remember this, when you take the text out of the context, the only thing left is the con. Mm -hmm. And we got a bunch of con men and women sitting up in a lot of cool pits in this nation. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 11. See, I'm going to verse 11. I'm going to keep reading, okay? And it says, there was. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Y'all know what was? Yeah, was was, was is past tense, right? Mm -hmm. There was a time when some of you were just like that. But now, Come on. your sins have been washed away and you have been set apart for God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have been made right with God because of what the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God have done for you. You are not made right because you are not doing any of those things that I read about in the, in the scripture above. Some of us are still doing some of those things. But the thing is, now you will no longer suffer the penalty of sin, which is death. Because Jesus has already taken that away. Amen? And so, for example, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you may still be doing some of that stuff. Just like I said the other day, you may be smoking some weed. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Every time you take a puff, I need you to say, I'm the righteousness of God. Say that. Huh? I'm the righteousness of God. Puff, puff, pass. I'm the righteousness of God. I don't care what it is that you're doing. You need to say, I'm the righteousness of God. Because he made you righteous. And the more you believe that you are made righteous through him, the more you're going to want to, the less you're going to want to puff, puff, pants. Why? Because you're going to lose the desire to do those things. It ain't nothing for to come up and shake you and make you stop doing that. No. We all are a product of our own decisions in this world. And can't nobody come and change you? It ain't my job to change you. You can do whatever you want. I'm not trying to change you. That is not my job. That is the Holy Ghost job. Amen. I'm not getting in his lane, and he is in my lane. All the time. <laughs> All the time. Amen? Amen. What are we supposed to be doing? You know, like I said, all that stuff we talked about, don't. you may still be doing something. Stop feeling guilty. You have been forgiven. You, you've been forgiven. All right? Amen. When did he forgive you? Yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. That's why I said there was a time. Where we at? Verse 12? Verse 12 says this. You may say, I'm allowed to do anything, but I reply, not everything is good for you. Now, why did Paul say that? You know why? Because remember all the things I just got finished talking about? Mm -hmm. This, <laughs> what Paul is saying is, hey, yeah, you're free. You're free. You're under grace. You're free. You can do anything. That's what you might say. But everything isn't beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, 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 look, you can go into the store and you can go steal something if you want to. God will still love you. Mm -hmm. 
But when you're in jail for 20 years, you need to realize that even though you did it and God still loves you, that wasn't beneficial for you. Amen. Amen. Now you are a product of your decision. And so now either you need to start a prison ministry <laughs> or you need to change your thinking and pray that you can get out of jail before that time. Amen? Yeah, you can do anything you want. You know why? Because it ain't being held against you. It's not going to your account. Sin is no longer being charged to your account. <gasps> I can't believe you said that, Pastor. I can't believe you said that. The word tells us in too many different places that sin is no longer being charged to your account. But you don't want to believe it. So you walk out and you're like, Lord, stop me from... Don't worry. The Bible says in Philippians 2 and 13 that he's working in you giving you the power and the desire to do his will. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to change you. That's the Holy Ghost job. Amen. He's working in you, giving you that power and desire to put him first. Amen? Amen. Amen? But you just gotta get to the point where, listen, I got a relationship with Jesus. I'm not just going to church to be religious. If you come here to be religious, you're in the wrong place because this is a pastor who hates religion. I love Jesus. I'm on team Jesus. Amen. 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 The very people that Jesus came to this earth to save are the very ones that religion pushes away. And these are the ones we're supposed to be bringing to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep reading. He said, not everything is good for you. And even though I'm allowed to do anything, y'all do know what anything means, right? Mm -hmm. Anything. Everything. Y'all do. Y'all understand what anything is, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Although I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. Mm -hmm. In other words, I must not become addicted to anything. Amen. Is it okay for me to drink? Yeah, as long as you don't become addicted to it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for me to, to uh, uh, go and, and, and you know go to Vegas and you know gamble a little bit? Yeah, okay. As long as you don't become addicted to it. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for me to do this or do that? Yes. As long as you don't become addicted to it, because when you become addicted to it, now you're putting it above God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though there are some things you may not become addicted to, and you're doing them, it may not be beneficial to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not because God ain't going to love you. God is always there. He loves you. He's always going to be there. But I just don't want to see you get locked up. I don't want to see you get shot because you're in the wrong person's bed. Hmm. I don't want to see you get beat down because you jumped in somebody's face and decided to cuss and fuss. Just wasn't a good decision for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But guess what? Through all that, he still loves us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hmm. Let's go to uh, Romans 6 and 15. Y'all know I'm moving to translation today, right? Amen. I'll say it again. Romans 6.15. Amen. Amen, we get there? Amen. Amen. We're going to do a little bit of reading. We're going to read down to 23. Is that okay? All right. And it says this. So since God's grace, you know about God's grace, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, God's grace. All right. So since God's grace has set us free from the law, law what law are we talking about? The Mosaic law. The Mosaic law. We're not talking about the law of Christ. We're talking about the Mosaic law. The law of Christ is love. Mm -hmm. the, Mosaic law, the Mosaic law is the 613 commandments. In the ten that was on stone. Okay? So it says, so since God's grace has set you free from the law, does this mean that we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? Now remember in the, in the New Testament, when you see this word obey, when you see this word obey, you pull up the actual word, you'll see this talking about believing. Amen? It's talking about believing. Do you do you realize 
that whatever you choose to believe becomes your master. Whatever you believe in becomes your master. Amen? Okay. You can choose sin, which leads to what? Death. Or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. Believe in God and receive his approval, right? Thank God. Once you were, y'all hear this? Wow. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you have obeyed with all your heart the new teachings of God has given you. What are the new teachings? Love. Love. The gospel of grace. Love. Love. Because if you can love one another like Christ loved you, you won't do things against that person. Amen. You won't do things against anyone. You won't do things against God. Amen? Amen. It says, now you are free from sin, your old master, and you have become slaves to your new master, which is righteousness. So how did you get free from sin? What do you have to do to be free from sin? What did you have to do? Did you have to go get some matzo, matzo bread? No. Uh, get them, the, the, what do they call the menorah, and, and light all... <laughs> All of the candles? No. no? You had to fast for 40 days, 40 nights? No? Of course not. Only thing you had to do was simply believe in Jesus. And because you believe in him, you are made righteous. Amen. 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 You are made righteous. Man, isn't it wonderful knowing that you are righteous? Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, now people ain't going to see you as righteous, and I don't care. They didn't see Jesus as righteous. They didn't even recognize Jesus when he came on the scene. But they knew the law and the prophets, everything was pointing to a Savior to come. And when the Savior came, they didn't recognize him. Why? Because they were caught up in religion. Amen. When you're caught up in religion, you're going to always miss out on Christ. And that is not what you want. Amen. I speak this way. Well, let me see. Verse 19, I speak this way using the illustration of slaves and masters because it is easy to understand. Before you let yourselves be slaves of impurity and lawlessness, now you must choose to be slaves of righteousness so that you will become holy. How do you become holy? I believe. Is this a hard question? How do you become holy? A teacher wants to hear. No, I'm a teacher. I want to hear. How do you become holy? We've been here all this time, four weeks, telling you the, the way you become holy is simply to believe. Amen. And you're afraid to spit the answer out because you don't believe it yourself. Mm. I'm not up here teaching for my sake. I'm teaching for your sake. Come on, Amen. I'm not up here because I want to be seen by you. I didn't even want to be a pastor. <laughs> Thank you for receiving that. <laughs> <laughs> I got tired of running. Amen. 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 Now, give you this word is for you to keep. Amen. Amen. It's for you to keep. This gift is for you. How do you make yourself righteous? I believe in who? In Christ. In Jesus. That's it. Nothing else. That's how you make yourself righteous. That's how you make yourself holy. That's how you make yourself sanctified. It's all the same meaning. Amen. 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 Yep, I want answers from y'all because I want to see if y'all are learning anything. Amen. Or if I'm just wasting my time being up here. In those days when you were slaves of sin, you weren't concerned with doing what was right. And what was the, and what was the result? It was not good. Since now you are ashamed of things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin. Are you free? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you might be doing some things, but you're free because death no longer holds you. You are free because the, 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 the wages of sin is death, and death can no longer hold you down. Amen. 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 You are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. The wages of sin is death, 
But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Now, if anything is love, that is love. He made us righteous even when we didn't deserve to be righteous. He took the sentence for us at, at the cross. And now because he took on our sin, we took on his righteousness. There was a trade that happened. It wasn't quite fair. I don't think that trade was fair. I think that, that we got more out of it. Amen? Amen. I believe we got more out of it. But even though that trade was made, now you have been made righteous. Mm -hmm. God loves us. There is nothing that can separate us from his love. Nothing can separate us from his love. So now you have freedom, y'all. Mm -hmm. You have freedom not to be a sinner, but you have freedom to be righteous. Amen. 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 It's simple. Receive Christ. Mm -hmm. Let him work in you. I'm not asking you to try and change. Nobody should be trying to change themselves. You can't do it. Right. We've tried. Well, I, you know, I got willpower. <laughs> Your willpower is crap. <laughs> Your willpower does not work. Amen. You need God's will. Amen. 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 And he said, I will. I will beware in you, giving you the power and the desire to do my will. Amen. Amen. So it's not a fight. Don't let religion make you do things that you just know you can't do. Be you. And when things need to change, I promise you, the Holy Spirit will change them. If nothing needs to change, just be who God has called you to be. Amen. Amen. Move forward. Don't let nobody judge you. This is a no judgment zone. Amen. Don't be judging. Y'all don't know what's going on in the back, in the corner, in the dark. Should nobody be judging nobody. Amen. We should always help one another up. Amen. 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 Y'all want me to know what this means? This means that be here next week, same time, same place, Amen. and we will continue on with nothing to separate you from the from the love of God as the deacons and ministers come. Amen. Amen. We don't keep on talking with this because we're not done, because there's so much that God wants us to see in this. We you know we've been trying. The thing about it is we've been trying to do so much in our power, but that's what the entire law was about. The law, right, was about what you can do. If you do that, then God would do this. If you do this, then God would do that. And the problem with that is nobody can ever do it. Amen. So God said, okay, I'm going to have to come up with something different in order for them to, to receive my blessings because apparently they ain't going to never receive my blessings here. So he came up with another contract and that, that that new contract was called grace and he gave us a savior and we couldn't keep the law but jesus kept the law so the only thing we have to keep now is jesus if you keep jesus then you've kept the law mm -hmm. amen yeah. that's all you have to do is keep jesus i don't know about you all but i mean when you weigh it out you gonna try and keep the law? There's a lot here. You know, we all know about the Ten Commandments, right? Because it was on stone. But what about the other 603 that goes along with it? Is it easier to keep those, or is it easier just to keep the new commandment? Love one another as I have loved you. Which, which one? Which one would you like? I like this hand right here. Amen. I like this one right here. I don't, this other one over here, no, it's a little bit too heavy. It's, it's a huge burden on me to try and keep. And that's what the law is. 
it is a huge burden on you trying to keep it because you are trying to get something from God that God has already set up for you, and all you have to do is receive it. But you're trying to do something strange to get it. You don't have to do anything strange to get it. All right? Our job is to reconcile mankind back to God, not to be strange. We talked about this last week, right? We're going to talk about it again next week because there's some strange folk in church. And you wonder why nobody wants to be. I see you walking down the street. You got this giant cross on your back and you dragging it. Talking about, yes, I'm doing this for Christ. He didn't ask you to do that. He bared the cross so you didn't have to bear it. And then when people see that, does that make people want to run to you or her? No, it makes people want to run away. Why? Because you're strange. Look at you. You're running up and down 190 with a big cross on your back. Is that making you holy? Is that making you worthy? Is that making you righteous? No. It's making you hot, tired, broke down, sore, bruised, scratched. Ain't nobody coming to you. But when you act like God is already getting... All your characters, God made you the way you are for a reason. So that you can reach folk that pass and can't reach. Amen. 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 So be you. Amen. God know how to use you. Don't be strange. And don't be telling folk to do things strange. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise God. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, tell you online. We thank God for you. We want you to know that we love you. And here at Christian Freedom Ministries, we have no we have no judgment zone. When you come out to here, only thing you're going to feel is the love of Christ. Amen. We encourage you to come out so that you can learn about how to be a Christian instead of being told to be one. We want you to know about your benefits in Christ. We want you to know about your inheritance in Christ. We want you to know about the great love that He has for you. Amen. Amen. So when you get the opportunity, don't just stay home and watch online. Come on out. Now, for those who can't get here because you're too far out, we understand and we love you. And we thank God for you that you are a part of this ministry no matter where you are on this planet. And if you want to sow into this ministry, all you have to do is go to christianfreedommen.org and go to the Donate tab. And there's plenty of ways where you can sow a seed in this ministry. Once you sow a seed, know and expect a harvest. Yes. You know how people say, well, you know, you sow a seed, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be expecting a harvest. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So if you plant grass seeds, you tell me you don't expect grass? <laughs> See, religion has you all over the place. And this is why we need to fall in love with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we love you here, and we thank God for you. Hey, remember this, who the sun sets free, is free indeed. Stay free. Amen. Amen.